Hello to you on this beautiful day. How are you guys doing today? How's life? If you guys remember last episode, I said something very important. I said some of these water caves that you see over here are not vanilla and a mod is doing that. I just wanted to mention I stand corrected by these six people. Six very handsome people who are standing on top of sulfuric acid. Today we're going to discuss something very important. We shall start with the judge because judges are reliability anyways. Lovely. You should never correct Lush when he's nagging. I'm hoping next episode you're going to retract your statements. Oh, and by the way, five people. This was the only residue in the JEI. So the judge is going to be buried in an unmarked grave. We don't want to raise any suspicions. In the comment section of the previous episode, somebody suggested something to solve our steam issues. He said that the solution is not boilers, it's the heat exchanger. I just wanted to see how the multi-block is going to look like and where the hatches are going to go. So energy goes here, output goes over there and input on this side. Okay, fine by me. The heat exchanger is going to take water, it's going to take lava and in exchange, we're going to get a ton of steam. Although that is the hope, I'm not really sure. We want to try and see how much steam are we going to get once it's warmed up. So we're giving it water, doesn't require that much lava, so we should be able to get away with just a pipe. And we do have an infinite supply of lava thanks to our host pulleys in the nether. We give you some steam and that is high voltage. And this was a cow. I guess we should just let it run for a while. I'm actually more interested in it once it's fully warmed up. You see, this is not great. Yeah, well it has been 62 iterations and already it's a huge improvement. The original recipe is supposed to take 20 seconds and we're getting 8 buckets of steam every, I don't know, 3-4 seconds? Less than that. And that is a very important thing for me because before I put the heat exchanger down, uh, we were losing steam at a very rapid rate. Now we're not. With just one. Yeah, I think now we're getting it every half a second. <laughs> awesome. What if we add upgrades? More upgrades? You're crazy. I love this. Well, we let it run for a while because I do need the steam, but we're going to make more. Although another point, uh, this is an HV turbine and we're consuming 208 EU per tick. We can go crazy, right? Something is not keeping up. Oh, we are not extracting it fast enough. Okay, then we have a great solution for our massive turbines. Therefore, our dearest friend who suggested this wonderful solution has to be silenced. We don't really want him to sell the same solution to our competitors. So bye bye. Anything left? Not really. I just wanted to mention that so far, you haven't seen anything. Good. I'm happy to hear that, because there was nothing to see anyways. As a byproduct of steam, there is a very low chance that we're going to get obsidian. I honestly have no production of obsidian, and the obsidian that we have is from vein mining structures. So, uh, we are having an item output hatch, just in case we get it. There is a very low chance. Maybe we should not put it on the top, because then I can just hopper it into an ender chest and get done with it. We are also going to have three outputs, because the amount of steam that we're going to get is going to be just super crazy. Then again, maybe not. Maybe there is a far better solution. We don't really have to import the steam into our system. We can literally just put it inside the tank. And you know, have a storage bus. Auto output, quantum tank. I think the multi-blocks are complete, we just have to do some wiring. Oh, and by the way, I made two more quantum tanks, so they go over there. We want to be able to use storage buses, but they are going to need a filter just in case applied energistics goes a bit crazy. We want it to be a lower priority because for the moment we do have boilers. We don't want the steam from the boilers to go here. And the only things that we need to provide it is water and steam for the turbines. So that's not that many channels. I have hooked up everything and we are getting obsidian. I thought there is a very low chance. Well, in any case, this is why we have an ender chest. And this is a decent supply of steam. This is a crazy amount of steam. Oh, battery ran out. It happens a lot. Let us give you a few upgrades. That's 200 buckets every second. Oh my goodness. Also, I think we keep the priority as zero because uh, it's extracting everything and I don't want that. Yeah, now it's being kept inside. Let's get the turbine. Even though we are producing tons of steam and I don't think there's any shortage of it, a storage bus is not even keeping up. You see, the quest book tells you to use the fluid pipes from modern industrialization. And apparently it's like mechanism, meaning the longer it is, the higher capacity it's going to have. So can you keep up? Well, you can keep up. Uh, I just turned off the reactors and we want to see how much power is it going to make. It's powering the base kind of and we're getting extra and this is just hp well i'm not sure if this mod is supposed to be confusing or i'm just being an idiot but uh, here's my problem this is an hv energy output hatch correct it means that this turbine should make us 512 eu per tick 
provided that we give it steam. This is an HV aluminium cable capable of transferring almost 8000 EU per tick. So we are making 512, but we can extract 8000. However, if you connect it, the buffer gets full. Why does it do that? This is not generating 512 EU per tick, it's making more? More than 8000? Because you see, this is an energy trash can. Voids everything anyways. Not like that, probably. So here's what we're going to do. If you guys remember, a few episodes ago, I did mention that we cannot make an EU P2P tunnel because the only item that it accepts is the superconductor. You can make any P2P tunnel with any item. For some reason, this is an exception. If we use a P2P tunnel, there's not going to be any limits on the transfer of power. Therefore, we're going to try and make a superconductor and see how it goes. But I'm assuming we're missing a lot of patterns. Just iridium. So can you make it now? A hundred? Yes. We already have a problem. Oh no, never mind. It just takes time. Yeah, iridium just takes a lot of time. That's it. So once we get the dust, we have to cook it inside the blast furnace. We get the hot superconductor ingot. It's been one week that I have been in this world and I forgot where everything is. Yeah, here. Obviously, it has to be cooled down, which is super easy. We do have a vacuum freezer and I just literally upgrade it to HV, meaning that it's going to work a bit faster. We compress it. We make it into a wire, which this part is pretty standard. Now it gets a bit crazy. Yes, we need polyvinyl chloride. We need cooling cell. And I guess we just start with the polyvinyl chloride, which needs vinyl chloride, which needs hydrochloric acid and acetylene. We're automatically getting acetylene and chlorine. So we just need a pattern for hydrochloric acid, then the vinyl chloride, and then the polyvinyl thingy. We don't have that many chemical reactors. I will change them later on. But can you make me some polyvinyl chloride? Yes, perfect. It's gonna take ages, I guess. Not that bad. Now we come to the cooling cell. We can make all the parts. That is perfect. I guess we just put you in an empty assembler. Yeah, last episode we already made cryofuel, so this should be fine. And finally, the superconductor. We have all the patterns. You go inside another assembler. That one. So can you make me superconductors? Ladies and gentlemen, for making six superconductor cables, this is the recipe. Well, that took a bajillion years. Also, the superconductor does not have a tier. So it should be able to connect to literally anything. You're still not extracting fast enough. It's fine. The idea was that we're going to use P2P tunnels. Uh, let's do that. We convert them into EU. Finally, one of them on the output. And I guess we can have some sort of an input to a trash can. So we link you to you. Oh yes, I'm being an idiot. You need power, which your power needs power. Good. Input side, output side. That also doesn't really work. Well, at least this time we're not voiding it. We're putting it into an HP storage. But the buffer is still full and I don't get it. We are transferring 8000. Why? Maybe it makes 8000 VU, but the voltage is determined by the output hatch so it can power HV machines. Also, my biggest problem is that the EU P2P tunnel is not really working. What if we try it like so and, you know, connect you to you, give you some power. Are you getting power? No. Also, whatever I do, this doesn't connect to EU P2P tunnels. Okay, so I had a plan which unfortunately is no longer going to work. My plan was very simple and this is not centered. How did I do that? Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> Very stupid. Anyways, that is something that I will fix. I wanted to mention my plan. The plan was we're going to have a ton of heat exchangers, then a ton of turbines, and then I'm going to use P2P tunnels in order to transfer that power wirelessly throughout our base and maybe even a space station. That plan is now down the drain. I think that's the expression because whatever I do, I cannot transfer the power from the large turbine wirelessly to anywhere because it does not connect to P2P tunnels. I could not find anything which resembles a Tesseract or a quantum entangler porter or anything similar. So yeah, if we want to use the large turbines, we have to have it in every single hall. But I don't think you really need that for the normal machines like these ones. You can just upgrade them to HV or something. The large turbines maybe should be used just for, you know, multi-blocks. Also, it's not all for nothing. We can have a ton of HV turbines and we have the steam to back it up. And just to be able to test if my theory works, we have our advanced turbine over here behind the vacuum freezers, which are making us argon. Actually, not argon. I think you're making me liquid air. Yes. And yes, this is a bit of an overcomplication for Steam, but don't you worry, we're going to remove a lot of export buses, so it's not going to be that laggy. So, I have connected it, Steam is keeping up, that's good. The HV storage units are getting power, that's much better. Therefore, I don't think we need these guys. Come on, really? <laughs> uh, we replace the input hatches from medium voltage to high voltage, and I guess we can just do this. Are you powered? Yes. Believe it or not, that's actually going to save me a lot of connections. Here is not the best example because I was being smart, but in other places it's going to be useful. But we don't need turbines. 
obviously, because now we should be able to just have a direct power connection. They're not going to work right now, uh, they need upgrades. Turbo machine casings, if we add it, yes, it's going to start working. And this guy is keeping up with the power, so it's not just 512 EU, it's 8000. For some very weird reason, this works fantastically well. Uh, we're extracting somewhere around, yeah, 675 EU per tick, and we're powering the vacuum freezers as well as the centrifuges. I'm waiting for the centrifuges to warm up, then we're going to get a decent amount of argon which we are going to need very soon. But that also provides us with a lovely opportunity, because the way that I understood everything, machines are not going to consume power based on their voltage tier, they're going to consume power based on the recipe. For example, a compressor which is going to make us carbon plates is going to consume 2 EU per tick in order to make that carbon plate, even if the machine is LV, HV, or whatever. Basically what I'm saying is that we don't need any of these turbines. The only thing that we need is a very long cable. Oh, you can just right click them. I didn't know. So yeah, without any augments, the maximum overclocked is going to consume 32 EU per tick. And we should be able to power everything without any problem. It's 700. That's it. I wish I knew that sooner, wiring would have been so much easier. You might notice a bunch of cables around the machine room and I kept the turbines just for you. I removed 50 turbines and we're just powering everything with that single massive turbine. That's it. It should be able to keep up even if all the machines are going to run. Now that my steam situation has been relatively solved, uh, I was thinking that maybe we should also solve the mining problem. Drills are an issue. And the reason that I never made an automation for them was that uh, we never had enough steam. So maybe these machines have to constantly run as well. However, before doing that, I guess I have to fix this. I centered the heat exchangers. I added two more. So now we have a total of six of them. And just in case you're wondering, this is the rate that we're getting steam, which I think it's more. However, when I was trying to figure out what we should do with the main machine room, I realized something very important. Over here, I do have the massive turbine. There was an enderman. Nice. <laughs> this guy is constantly working. So basically what we're doing is that we're wasting 7000 EU per tick at all times. And that is steam, which is going to waste. Over here, it's not a very big deal because I'm going to have more multi-blocks. So eventually it will cap up. But over here, I'm just going to make gears and drills. So it's never ever going to cap up. Therefore, if we want to have more massive turbines, one of them is going to be for the quarries and the other one for the blast furnaces. And over here, we're just going to upgrade the turbines to HV. However, gears are incredibly expensive. So instead of having a barrel which can hold 8,000 items, we're just going to use a chest. That's, I don't know, 2,700 items. But the concept is going to be the same. We're just going to export steel rods, for example, into this compressor and it's going to give us rings and not through an ender chest. Come on. Thank you. It just goes inside these chests. Yeah, it has been around two hours later and I really have not much to show because the only thing that we're doing over here, I just automated the steel drill as well as the bronze one. Uh, these are expensive, so they don't really have a chest. We just have a storage bus next to the machine. But I counted. There are 19 machines in this room which are just dedicated to making two drills, excluding every single other machine which is making us plates, curved plates or rods or whatever, which are in the other machine room. So I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or this is how you're supposed to do modern industrialization, but this is unsustainable. I mean, yeah, I can spam more machines, maybe 200 more, but uh, then it's going to be laggy. Another massive problem that I have is resource generation. I did upgrade the miners, so uh, this is how fast we're getting resources. Where's my ender chest? Yeah, look, <laughs> this is how fast we're getting them. It's a bit stupid. But again, I'm very short on a few resources, including copper. At the start of today's episode, I had around 100,000 copper ingots, and now I have 23,000. Well, 24. Ish. In the recent version of the pack, they have added deep mob learning so you can have a few simulation chambers and get tons of copper. I'm not gonna update the pack because I'm worried it's gonna break my game. And I don't really want that to happen. So I have only one solution open to me and that is uh, we have to dupe it. But there is a line that I don't really like to cross and that is duping it out of nothing. Um, maybe we can make it into a process. Because if you guys remember, in my version of the mod pack, uh, you can use 9 copper ingots to make a block. Pretty standard, right? If you cut it into the cut copper, you're going to get four blocks. I don't think in vanilla you can convert the cut copper back to ingots or not, but here you can convert it and you will get nine. So it's kind of like or quadrupling a bit cheaty, but I don't have a choice. If you go through 70,000 iron in like one day, that's stupid. Anyways, we are getting raw copper ore from our quarries. We can convert it into a block of raw copper. Obviously we would be able to cook that thing, somehow use this recipe in order to get cut copper and then unblock it. I'm very desperate for copper, so this episode I am going to do that, but if in between the episodes you have a solution, I'm all ears and any suggestion will be welcomed. Apart from updating the pack, obviously. Okay, so how do we want to do this? We're going to have an entangled chest. We need to be able to reroute the copper from our ore processing. 
Uh, for the moment, it's just being smelted, so we remove it. Instead, we're just going to export it into the entangled chest, right? Is it going in? Maybe we need a storage bus. Oh, come on, don't do that. No, <laughs> you stupid idiot. Yeah, we got other garbage, but I did set the filter. I think the easiest way of doing this is that we should have a packer over here. And you know, we can just hopper in the copper. That's going to send it into an electric furnace, which is going to give us a block of copper. Then we need to start cutting it, so a cutting machine. And finally, we need to unpack it into copper ingots. So everybody's working. Yes, nice, nice. We just need to have an export bus for lubricants and I don't know, an entangled chest. Are we getting copper? It's not going to be the fastest thing in the world, but it's decent. We seem to be operational. The problem is the furnace, which is incredibly slow. And yes, I have been checking. There seems to be another or quadrupling system from Industrial Revolution, but I guess this also works because I'm not just duping copper. I'm using the copper that I'm mining. And so far, I guess I'm gaining copper very slowly. Now that I think the copper situation has been solved, uh, we have a new problem. You might notice that we have tons of machines over here. You might also notice that we have a lot of machines over here as well and a ton more under here. And yeah, there is another room with a lot of machines. And there was also going to be another room full of machines. My problem is going to be lag. Uh, at this very moment, yes, our FPS is above 100. But that is because not all of the machines are running constantly. Only a few of them at the same time. But trust me, all of them are going to run at the same time. Do you know why? Most of the machines that you see over here are just to make the analog circuit, correct? This guy. You need four of those in order to make the electronic circuit. You need four electronic circuits in order to make the other circuit whose name I forgot. Yes, digital circuit. Then you need four digital circuits in order to make the processing unit. And obviously you need four processing units in order to make the quantum circuit. I'm hoping it ends there. Yeah, it seems so. So I think 8000 analog circuit is going to give us like 50 of the quantum circuit. So it's nothing. And if we remove one stack, uh, all the machines are going to start running again. I'm not really a fan of having that many machines in one dimension. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to space. Wait a minute. You can't shift. I thought you can. Oh my goodness, the base is dark. The space station from Ad Astra should just be a void world. We can use that for machines. Yeah, one very important thing to remember is that I have no idea what kind of material we're going to need in order to make a space station. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be for free. So solar system, earth, huh? I just love the temperature, minus 217 degrees. But at least we know the resources. Uh, I think we lost our rocket. I don't know why they tell us not to hold shift. Just tell us hold space. Yeah, I lost the rocket. It's fine, we use the garbage rocket. Yes, we are going to ascend to the heavens with the garbage rocket. And I didn't remember what to bring, so I brought everything. I should have probably wrote it down. Oh, I brought everything. That's good. Space station? Did I die? Hold space. Oh, it's already made. Interesting. <laughs> the issue is that I don't really want to crash land on it. Okay. We're in. It's not something super fancy. We can have our waypoint. It has multiple floors with glass <laughs> and shroom lights. Okay, I did not pay attention to that. I think here's what we're going to do. We're going to have the waypoint here, you know, so that we can go back and forth without wasting fuel. And let us explore the station so that we know what we're dealing with. This should be the landing station, I guess. And that's basically it. I need to know something. I'll be right back. Hey, you come with me. So just out of curiosity, what's going to happen? Not much. He's just suffocating and freezing and dying. Good to know. I just set up a quantum ring in our base. Let us go to the station and set up the other one because having access to our applied energistic system is the most important thing over here. Otherwise, there's literally nothing to do over here. So uh, do we have access? No. Is it not chunk loaded? Probably. It wasn't. So do I have access? No. Here is a stupid chunk loader. Be loaded. Jerk. Okay, is there something I'm missing? Let us change the quantum entangled singularities because in any case, I lost one of them. I broke the multi-block and uh, which one was it? Uh oh, yes, it's you. I broke the multi-block just in case something is wrong and uh, I don't know what happened to the singularity. But everything is fine. It's chunk loaded. I have channels. Everything should work. Network booting. Device online. Oh, finally. How can there be something wrong with quantum entangled singularities? Not very important. The first thing that we're going to do is to remove these stupid ladders. Why would you have wooden ladders in your space station? For the moment, we're just going to cover the roof so that we do have a sealed area. That's glass. Okay. And how the hell do we make oxygen? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Distributes oxygen into the air. Fine by me. So oxygen distributor. Where do we put it? here. I just want to know how the system is going to work. I'm sure it's going to be like Galactic Craft. So we're going to need an oxygen loader. We don't really need to do crazy things. We can just export the water. And if we give you power, you should give me oxygen. 
very slowly. Uh, we're not pumping the water fast enough. Yeah, much better. I'm assuming we also need to have some sort of a pipe for oxygen. Why are you extracting the water? It's a bit different than Galactic Craft, so I had to read the guidebook, but you don't need an oxygen loader. The oxygen distributor does everything on its own. You give it water, it gives you oxygen and distributes it in your station so we can breathe, right? Yes. We can breathe everywhere? Interesting. What if I break this? I'm just saying that something should happen to me. It does show you the range and it does work outside. This is a very weird mechanic, but that is perfectly fine. We can wear our normal armor and we do have a space station for ourselves. Maybe an airlock. We do have a functioning space station and next episode, we're gonna fill it in with machines. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.